I thought I had reached the end of Minecraft knowledge, trivia, skills. Every page of the Minecraft wiki had purple links. For years, I had studied it. Basic knowledge gave way to command blocks, then data packs. As my thirst for creative power grew, so too did my skill set. Eventually, feeling constrained by the weakness of the tools provided by Mojang, commands, data packs, these things, I sought something greater in the form of the plugin, an expertly crafted server-side mod loader that could run code I wrote while still being joinable in the vanilla game. Not as fragile and complex as a mod, yet not weak like the humble data pack. This, I thought, was my end game. I have little desire to write mods. I believe in accepting and rejoicing at what Hatsune Miku has given us. Truly, vanilla creations were always my passion. Seeing what the community could do with simple tools is entertainment like no other. But there was always a problem. Data packs are cumbersome to write and even more difficult to distribute and convince people to download. I dreamed of a solution. A server where anyone could write a data pack using a pre-configured editor in their browser and run the code in a server they had near total control over. Then, using a menu written with a plugin, players could hop between worlds, learn from each other, and access tools greater than what even the vanilla game could offer. This was my idea. But it turns out, nobody has done any of that stuff before because it's actually really hard. This video is about the latest part of that project. Making a custom fork of a fork of a fork of a fork of a plugin loader written in 2010 to fix very important security issues that only I am stupid enough to encounter. This project, which I didn't mention is live and functional by the way, legitimus.com, join now, buy a rank. This project is so absurd. Giving every player on my network full vanilla command access, creative mode, world edit, slash execute, everything. This is stupid and insane. This video is gonna explain just one of the things I had to do to make this work. Not to mention, I want nothing less than full vanilla compatibility, all while running the server on paper, which is, notably, not vanilla. There's a reason this has never been done before. I'm gonna tell this story linearly, from my perspective. It's 2022. I've given up on my first minigame project, and am close to giving up on the one I started immediately afterwards. Fundy commented on my devlog, but I just wasn't motivated to finish it. After months of creative burnout, I decided what I really needed was someone to just tell me what to do, so I started looking for a job developing Minecraft plugins. Now, I was already a competent Minecraft developer. My dream was to work at Knox Crew, developing MCC and MCC Island. I sent in my application, for which I was just just slightly underqualified, and, uh, nothing. I was gonna have to boost my portfolio if I wanted to seem cool enough to get hired by anyone, let alone the top dogs. I never ended up working for Knox Crew, but I did get better at plugin development. I decided that I would seem a lot more impressive if I had some contributions to paper. Oh, right. What is paper? This is important to the story. Back in ancient times, there was Bucket. This was a server-side mod loader, except the mods were called plugins. Players with no mods installed could join the server, and the server could have custom functionality, though it obviously couldn't add new assets or anything. Bucket was cool, but eventually it phased out in favor of Spigot, a fork of Bucket. Every Bucket plugin could run on Spigot, and honestly, most Spigot plugins could run on Bucket, but why would you do that? Spigot is the new cool thing. Okay, well now it's current year, and Spigot is old news. Now everyone's using a fork of Spigot called Paper. It's the most used server besides Vanilla. Nowadays, there's not really much of a case for using anything else. Oh, okay, well, unless you're doing advanced redstone or, well, commands. Surely there will be no issues with this. Don't, don't even worry about it. All right, that's what Paper is. A server that can run plugins and is a fork of a fork. Paper is open source, so anyone smart enough can write code for it, add features, fix bugs, etc. I was trying to get a job working on servers, so I figured if I had my code accepted into the Paper MC project, that would look great on a resume. So I learned how to contribute to Paper, but that's boring nerd stuff and I won't bore you with Okay, who am I kidding? Everybody who watches this channel is a huge nerd. So, it turns out contributing to paper is hard. I don't recommend it to beginners, like, at all. The thing about Minecraft mod loaders is that according to Minecraft's license, you're not allowed to distribute Mojang's code. Now, that's not to say you can't use their code, but you can't distribute it. So paper and many others get around this with a system called patches. 
Basically, there are hundreds of files in the paper repo, each of which says, take the decompiled Mojang code that you never get from them, you get it straight from a decompiler which runs on your PC. Take the code, and at this spot, change these things. Add lines, edit lines, remove lines, and run them all in order so that the code comes out exactly the same at the end. Does this sound ridiculous? It should. I just about lost my mind when I found out this is what happens every time you download a new build of paper. It's just downloading and patching the Mojang server before you run it the first time. What? So anyway, contributing to paper means downloading the repo, applying all the existing patches to the server, then writing your changes. Once you've made your changes, you can then reverse the process and build a new patch file. Low-key, this is satisfying as hell. Seeing all your work in this clean little file, whew. And if you want to edit an existing patch, oh, you're reverting the repo before you want. Make the changes, then go through this fricked and confusing squash process to merge your commit into the existing one, then go back to the head and rebuild the patches. Remember when I thought I knew it all because I knew all that command block stuff? At some point, while doing stupid legitimate stuff, I discovered that putting nothing in the text box of a jigsaw block and closing it would kick you from the server. This didn't happen in vanilla, so I had found a certified paper bug. I knew how to patch paper now, so I just went in, fixed it, submitted my patch, and they accepted it. I'm on the paper MC website, baby! Look at me go, Legitimus is a real and qualified programmer. I also submitted one more to fix, uh... Mud blocks not firing a block form event. Cool, I guess. So now I'm on there twice, well only once, but it's two patches, I'm not a one-hit wonder, basically. Fast forward one and a half years. I've just launched my Minecraft server, and things are going shockingly well. I've got paper running in the lobby, and for each person's world, I'm running a special fork of paper called Advanced Slime Paper. This allows for use of a custom world format developed by Hypixel for housing. The files are incredibly small and can be easily stored in a database, making it great for our application. So if you're keeping track, we're now four levels of fork deep. Then one day I'm chilling in the lobby when, oh no, somebody just joined with the owner rank. All right, boys, pack it up. The good times are over. We've been hacked. It's compromised. It's all, it was, whoa, 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 is what I thought was going to happen. Turns out the person was just experimenting and accidentally found a ridiculous exploit. I shut down the whole Minecraft server and let them explain in my DMs. And basically, command blocks had no permission checks. Bruh. Turns out, while command blocks show the same autocomplete that you see in chat, they can actually run any command with full permissions. The only exception being vanilla commands with a higher op level, but that doesn't matter. This was a problem. I quickly threw together a patch to disable command blocks and reopened the server, apologizing for the temporary inconvenience. All right, viewer, how does one fix this problem? Well, I'm using plugins, so obviously I write a patch in the plugin. Okay, cool. I could do that, but there are two problems. One, it's very hard to stop a player with full admin from doing anything. I could filter what commands they can set in the command block, but they could just place it with slash set block. Maybe I could filter all commands that are executed. Well, okay, there's another problem. Just very, very rarely, on some occasions, all the plugins fail to load. Yeah. Look, when you're running a big async network like this, occasionally weird stuff happens, and your system has to be able to deal with it. If the plugin is the only thing preventing a massive security exploit, it will eventually crash and take down our security filters with it. This leaves only one option. I have to make a custom version of paper. I sprung into action thinking, how hard could it really be? Turns out, rather hard. I don't know the first thing about Java build tools? Gradle? Git submodules? What the f- I saw this and I knew. I knew in my heart I could do it. But the wall of knowledge I would have to pick up was intimidating. This is, however, one of my favorite activities. I see an insurmountable challenge and my eyes just start glowing red. I would fork this thing. Eventually what ended up working was copying this alternate branch of a template fork from paper and then changing all the names around. Thus was born legit slime paper. That's right, it's not just a fork of paper, this has to run in worlds. So it's a fork of advanced slime paper. LSP, ASP, paper, spigot, bucket. A fork of a fork of a fork of a fork of bucket. Oh. So, what does this marvelous piece of software do, you might ask? Well, 
let me run you through its six amazing patches. First, there's a patch that just changes the name of the server everywhere to legit slime paper. Gotta have that branding. Then, we fix that command lock exploit. When the server loads, we set a flag in each command saying that it's vanilla. All the commands registered after this will have the flag be false. Then, whenever a command is executed by a command block, check the flag. If it's not a vanilla command, don't run it. We also fix the sign and text exploit. No huh? You can make text on a sign run a command when you click on it. This will get run as the person who clicked it, complete with all of their permissions. Meaning, if you put slash op your username and someone with op clicks it, you will get opt. This can be very subtle. You can hide the message, and it's just not great for security. Yes, it does require someone who already has permissions to make a mistake, but to be honest, it's a very easy mistake to make, and with everyone on the server being able to do this, it's got a pretty big chance someone would try it. I fixed this by literally modifying the text style class. Anytime there is a style applied to text, we check if it's got one of the blacklisted commands or a non-vanilla command. If so, just don't apply it. While yes, we could check sign executions on the server, we can't check when someone clicks a message in chat. There is no server-side way to know if they typed the command themselves or if they clicked a chat message. So this way we can be certain that no forbidden commands will ever be run this way. Oh right, the fork also allowed us to make an important change to advanced slime paper. It's designed to be used by small minigames and plugins for quick, oft-resetting maps. This means they also entirely removed the ability to save scoreboard and player data. This is obviously bad for our use case. So the very first patch I wrote actually just re-adds data saving. The next patch fixes some non-vanilla behavior with negative explosion radiuses. I still don't know why paper has this change. It makes no sense. Speaking of things that are non-vanilla, in paper, there's no way to allow someone to use structure blocks without literally server-side opping them. We cannot do this for security reasons, so we need an assignable permission. I wrote a one-line patch that adds that, and I even asked paper to merge my patch years ago, but they never did. This is so sad. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Learning all about the cursed internals of Minecraft and bending it to my will. This whole ordeal was by far the most difficult part of making the Legitimus server. Well, except maybe the backend part that Logbug wrote, but I didn't have to do any of that. Conclusions. What do I recommend if you want to try contributing to something like paper or making a fork of your own? First of all, don't. And if you do, boy howdy, be prepared to do your research. Learn about Java, obviously, Gradle, Git submodules, Git patches, and also get ready to find out that the Windows API doesn't allow file paths over 256 characters. You have to edit the registry to make long file paths work? Hello? Also, it takes my fast computer like 45 minutes to build the first time. And sometimes you just gotta randomly delete all your files and start again because the Git repo becomes haunted. So basically don't do this, but if you do and you succeed, please hit me up. It was fun the first time, but I don't wanna be the only person maintaining this cursed fork. Second conclusion is join my server. It's fun. We got cool worlds and cooler people. Legitimoose.com, buy full moose, bye.